All right, Shalom, Shalom, Israel, Shalom, this is Fishman for Zion. Passover 2023 edition, right? We give all glory, honor, and praise to the Most High God, the Heavenly Father, whose name alone is Yahweh. And we do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, who the Fishman for Zion, right? On the scene, right? The water to the Most High for allowing us to see another day, another year to celebrate the Passover. Right in the remembrance of the Most High saving His children, in the remembrance of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shah. Right. Um, let's kick it off with um, Luke chapter twenty-two and verse eight. Let's kick it off with the Book of Luke chapter twenty-two. Let's go to verse eight. It's the Book of Luke chapter twenty-two, starting at verse eight, and it reads, "And He sent Peter and John." saying, go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. Read that one more time. Luke 22 and verse 8. And he sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare us the Passover. Go and prepare what? Go, go and prepare, prepare us, us the, the Passover, Passover. Right. That we may eat. Right. That we may eat. Right. So this is the season of the Passover. Right. That we're supposed to commemorate for as long as the children of Israel are born. All right, real quick, let's get Psalms chapter 78 and uh, verse 1 through the Spirit. Uh, let's start at verse number 1. Psalms chapter 78 and verse 1. Well, the Psalms chapter 78, verse 1. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline thy ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, right. which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. Right. We will not hide them from their children. No, we're going to keep them to ourselves. We will not hide, hide them from, from their, their children. children. Right, read on. Showing to the generations to come the praises of the Lord. And his strength, his wonderful works that he have done. Right. So what are the strength and the wonderful works that the Lord have done? One of them is saving us out of slavery, That's out of right. Egypt. Right. So everyone, all so-called black, Hispanic and Native Americans should know about how the Most High God delivered us from captivity, hard bondage. From who? From our enemies. Right. This happened many, many years ago. Many, many years ago. We were literally slave, saved out of slavery, right? You can read about that in Exodus, how the Lord sent the plagues upon those wicked, nasty Egyptians and saved us out of captivity and did wonderful works for us. As it said in verse three, can you read that, uh, that verse one more time? I mean, verse, verse four? four, come. Yeah, with the Psalm 78, verse four, we will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he have done. Con, uh, read verse five. Bible five. Seven. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, right? which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Right, read on. And verse Six, the generation to come that the that generation, the generation to, come, to come, right, might know them, even the children which should be born, who should array should arise and declare them to their children. Right. So we give all glory and honor and praise to the Most High that He left of these records. Right. That's why the Lord said, "If it had not been for the Lord who was mm -hmm. on our side, and we would have been consumed." Right. The nations would have consumed us if the Lord wasn't merciful to leave us our records. Right. We would we have no we would have no clue, right? You ever wonder why the, the so-called slaves, which are Israelites, sung those songs like the Jordan River, right? And um swing low sweet, sweet cherry. Yes. We may not have had the knowledge at the time, but it was in our spirit to know that that was us. So it's of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed and have these records to so rethink ourselves. To know that the Most High um, judgment and His wonderful works that He's done for us, right? 
So let's go back to um Luke, right? Luke chapter 22 and verse 8 to see what the Lord says. Does every before we move, does everybody know about our history and how the Lord saved us out of Egypt? You be honest, bro. Yeah, yeah, kind of sorta. Kind of sorta. All right, well, we could read the history of it, right? Uh, let's let's just go straight to Exodus chapter one. Starting at the top. Kind of. Exodus chapter one, verse one. Now these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man and his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulon. And Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher, and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls. For Joseph was in Egypt already, and Joseph died, and all his brethren and all that generation. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, right? Which knew not Joseph. And he said unto this unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. Right. So the, this is the history of the Egyptians planning to put us in slavery. Right? Just like the prayer that we read earlier in uh, Psalms chapter 83. They have taken crafty counsel against thy hidden ones and consulted under one consent, right? This is this is nothing new. They did this back again, and they're continuing to do it now, right? So this is the Egyptians planning to put us in slavery because this new king, he knew not Joseph. He didn't know about how Joseph went inside of Egypt and taught them mathematics and taught them all manner of science and equitable things, right? right? You can read about that in the book of Psalms, chapter 105. So... He, his plan was to put us in slavery and make us taskmasters. So let's skip to chapter four, um, Exodus chapter four. And let's um, start from the top, right? Just to summarize it. Exodus four and one. And Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. Right. So at this time, the most high God visited Moses via an angel. Right. And charged him to go save the children of Israel. Right. Now, let's read that account real quick, because a lot of people think that that the most high God came out of his third heaven and literally talked to Moses. That's not what happened. Right. Let's go to Exodus chapter three and verse one. Exodus three and one. Now, Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father in law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert. And came to the mountain of God power, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord Yahweh appeared unto him. And who, appear, who appeared unto Moses? And the angel of the Lord Yahweh appeared unto him. Right. So the angels in the scriptures are referred to as God, right? Because they are gods, their powers, their rulers on the earth. Just like how the Lord said, We're gods in Psalms chapter 82. Right. You have different tiers of gods. Right. So the angel appeared unto Moses. Now, when you, when you, when you read on, which we're going to read on, it's going to tell you God appeared or the most high or God appeared unto Moses. And this guy just talking about is the minister that the most high God sent, which is an angel. Right. Read on. Verse two, Exodus three and two. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire. And this is also how you find out the name of the Lord. He's going to tell you the name of the Lord. Of course, in the Hebrew tongue, but you have to understand who's speaking, who's telling the name, right? Because there's many uh, names out here that people go by, but they're not reading the scriptures as it is written, right? Read on. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire. Right. This is the same counter encounter that... Um, that um Samson's uh, parents had, right? When the angel came down and it left up in the in the fire, and they was kind of confounded what's happening. This is just, this is the same encounter. These are the encounters that our forefathers had with the Most High via His ministering spirits, which are the angels. Right? Read on. The bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, "I will now turn aside and see this great sight." 
why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him. So it said, God, when the, when, when the Lord saw, he said, God called unto him. Read on. Now, who, who is this God? It's still the same person that it said it uh, appeared unto him, which is the angel. Right? Read on. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. And he said, so like, and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place where on thou standest is holy ground. Right. So he said, take your shoes off before you come and enter into me. Because the place that you're standing on is holy ground. What does that mean? A real, a real quick, simple precept on that. Get um, Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. Right? Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 1. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. Right. And be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of food. So M Moses, when you go back and read the story, Moses was raised up as an Egyptian. Right? Meaning he was raised by heathen. People that didn't know the Most High God. The people that knew the Most High was the Israelites. So when the angel appeared unto Moses, and Moses knew he was an Israelite, which is why he uh, went to save his people and beat up the Egyptians. So the Most High charged him to leave those doctrines that he was raised up as, as an Egyptian, and take his shoes off. That's a signification for that, right? Come as a babe, just like in the truth in so-called New Testament. In John chapter 3, it says, um, what? Be born again. This is the same concept. Right. So when you read in the scriptures in the, what you call the New Testament, you're going to find out when you read in the so-called Old Testament, it's a mirror of the same thing. So when Moses was trying to take off his shoes, he was charged to leave the doctrines, leave the folly that he just read, that he just was taught and come to the Most High in spirit and in truth. That's really what it means on a deeper level. Right. So go back to that. Exodus. Exodus three and two. Verse and six. Use that verse six. Verse 6, moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. Right. For I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them. Out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore behold the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Right. So the same thing that's going on now, that's the same thing that happened here in America. Right. The Lord has seen all of our affliction here in America. And the, the reason, the way that the Lord has seen it was through this same spirit that's having an encounter with Moses, which is the angel. He said, listen, I've seen these things. That's why the Lord said in Sirach, it says the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, beholding all of the ways of men. Right. Which is those ministering spirits. Real quick, get a quick precept. Um, Psalms chapter 104 and verse 3, right? And get um, Sirach chapter 29, I mean, um, 23 and 19, to prove that real quick. Psalms chapter 104, verse 3. Okay. And it reads, who lay up the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot. Who make it the what? Who make, make it the, the clouds, clouds his, his chariot, chariot. Right. Who walk, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Continue. Come. Who make his angels spirits, his ministers flaming fire. Right. Ministers are flaming fire. The, the word minister goes back to the word to go forth, to go out. Right. So the Lord has his ministers out seeing everything, judging everything. Right? That's why um the book of Sirach says this. Read that real quick. 23 and 19. Book of Sirach, chapter 23, verse 19. And it reads, Such a man only feared the eyes of men, and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter 
than the sun. Right, because the Lord created all these different angels that see everything. Right, read on. Beholding all the ways of men and considering considering the most secret parts. Right, considering the most secret parts. Real, one last quick precept on that, Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 3. Book of Proverbs chapter 15, start at verse 3. And it reads, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, right? Beholding the evil and the good. Beholding the evil and the good, right? Which is why what? Which is why the Most High sent these angels to deliver this message to Moses. Hey, I'm going to save the children of Israel. I see all the affliction that's taking place. I see the evil that's being done to my chosen people, right? So go back to Exodus chapter 3 and um, let's jump down to verse 13. Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall I say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Right. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. What did he say? I am that I am. Read on. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am, has sent me unto you. Right. Tell them that I am has sent them. Right. Which is saying what? He's delivering this message, saying, what is the Most High's name? He said, I am, meaning he is. Right. Because this angel is delivering the message to Moses. He is. That's how you get the name Yahweh. He is. Or he exists. He to be. That's the name of the Most High. Right. So let's go to Exodus chapter 4. And the reason why that's important, because the angels came down to deal with the children of Israel, right? It tells you that in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 1, that the Lord spoke to the children of Israel face to face, right? Uh, verse 1 on down, right? So uh, let's read that. Exodus chapter 4, verse 1. And Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, the Lord had not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thy hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground. And it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand and take it by thy tail. Right. So the Mosai had the, like, brothers, when they say, uh, Do the Jews require a sign? Right, like we was talking earlier, the brothers, you know, the brother threw up some prayers, like, well, you know, Lord, I want to see it, I want to see a cherry. Next thing you know, the most high delivers and answers for you. Right. So this is the same way. This is how our people been getting down. Well, well, Lord, let me see something. Right. right. That's how Jake always let me see something. Well, let me show me what you got. Yeah. Right. You know, you don't believe it until you actually right. see it. This is how our people is, man. Our forefathers are the same way. So read on. Verse 4. And the Lord said Mo unto Moses, put forth thy hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob had appeared unto thee. Right. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Right. This is the same God. This is the same God throughout the whole book. Right. People freak out when they go to the book of Matthew and they just forget about that. They just try to forget about he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's nothing new in the son. He's the same God then and he's the same God now. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is going to save these same people as before in ancient Egypt. Right? Read on. Verse 6. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, Behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, put thy hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. Right. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first son, that they will believe the voice of the latter son. And it shall come to pass, if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land. Right. So you got to remember, Moses wasn't 
really raised up with his brethren like that. So he's like, he, you know, he, he doesn't have the most confidence in himself that these people are going to hear him, right? You got, these are Judites, right? In the ancient world, right? You know, so these are so-called black Negroes, if you will. So he's kind of like, well, you know, Lord, you got to kind of help me in this thing. Right. Right. I need, I need, I, you think I can do this? I'm just Moses. Right. Read on. And the water which thou takest out of the river shall become blood upon the dry land. Right. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, nor since thou hast have spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. And the Lord said unto him, What does that mean? Right? When he said, I'm of slow speech and a slow tongue. He said he stuttered. Give me Acts 7 and 22. Book of Acts. Acts chapter 7 and start at verse um start at verse 20 start at 21 start at start at 20 book of Acts chapter 7 and verse 20 in which time Moses was born and was ex exceeding fair right Moses was born and he was exceeding fair read on and nourished up in his father's house three months and when he was cast out Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourish him for her own son. Right. And Moses was learned in all wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words. No, might, no, he had a stutter. And was mighty in words and in deeds. Right. So Moses didn't speak the language of the Israelites. Right. He was raised up at, with the Egyptians. He spoke their language. He was in their, he was, you know, in their community. Right, so he didn't he didn't have the lingo of what the Israelites had, so to speak. Right, that's really what that means. I wouldn't say that he had a stutter, because it says that he was mighty in words. He was powerful. That's like if a person is in like China or like Africa, someone they come to America, they say certain stuff, like but they're slow with it, and they say certain words that like go with everything. Like exactly. Or let's say like we in North Carolina, and you got um, you know, we speak our language. But you have brothers in Baltimore. They got their own. They got their own lingo, their own language of how they speak. You know, that's that's more so what it is. Or you you got the people here. You got the people in South Carolina. They got the Geechee Gullah. But we are, we still speaking the same language because remember they speak. They, these are Hebrews now. But the Egyptians they got their own situation going on. So that's more so what that means. So go back to um, uh, Exodus chapter seven. I mean um. Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. Starting back at 11. 11. And the Lord said unto him, Who who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seen, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Have what? Have not I the Lord? Hey, I'm going to give you the power that you're going to be able to resonate with these people. You're going to be able to meet them where they are. Like in, in the book of Jeremiah, it says, uh, make your head hard against theirs. So sometimes you have to, depending on who you're teaching, you gotta got to, your spirit kind of got to match their spirit, so to speak. That's how you, that's how the better teachers get to reach more of the people because they meet them where they are. All right, read on. Now, therefore, go, and I will be with thy mouth and teach thee. What thou shalt say. I'm going to be with your mouth. I'm going to teach you what you're going to say. Right? Read on. And he said, O my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he see thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. And he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. All right, now hold that what you got. Let's jump to um, 
Exodus 7 and 6, right? So this, this is the most high. He, he getting Moses ready for this huge task that he's about to do, saving the children of Israel out of captivity. Now, like, like the scripture said, this is a new king on earth. So this new king is doing what he want to do. You know, Moses is going to go in there. And is he going to hearken unto Moses? Let's find out. Exodus chapter 7, verse 6. Uh, 16. 16. Book of Exodus. Let's start, start at 15. Chapter seven, Let's start at 14, Salaki. Chapter 7, verse 14. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuses to let people go. All right. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goeth out unto the water, and thou shalt stand by the river drink against against he, excuse me, against he come and the rod which was turned to a serpent, shall thou take it in thy hand, right? And thou shalt say unto him. The Lord power of the Hebrews have sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go. Saying what? Let, Let my, my people, people go. go. Read on. That they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, hither, hitherto thou wouldest not hear. Thou wouldest not hear. Right. So when Moses went into Egypt, right? Everybody should know this. This is history, right? And he said, Let my people go. And Moses didn't do it. What happened after? You remember that, brother? When Moses went up in Egypt and said, let my people go to Pharaoh, right? This nasty king that had our people in slavery. And he didn't want to let us go. What did the Most High do? He hardened his heart. Yeah, it's going to tell you. It's going to tell you on it in the next verse. We're going to read it. So, all right, so these are the plagues. So we're going to read the plagues. So there was how many plagues? Everybody know. Y'all know. You know. How many plagues were there? Ten. ten. Yeah, it was ten plagues. Yeah, it was ten plagues. So let's read them, right? Um, keep reading on. Uh, verse 17. Thus saith the Lord, In this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I was smite with the rod that is in my hand. Right? Upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. What is the most high gonna do? They shall be turned, turned to, to blood. blood. So the first plague is what the most high saying, Listen, you don't want to let the children of Israel go, so I'm gonna turn your water into blood. Right? And water is very important. You need water to, to live, survive, to keep your community going. So the most high plague the Egyptians with the first plague was turning their water into blood. Yeah, he turned their water oh, into blood. Into blood. Okay, so, nah, so that would be similar to what's going on right now. Similar to what's going on right now. Well, I would not let it be turned into blood, but we can't drink it, so it's it's not for no good. Well, you could say that as well, but there's also a certain places where there's yeah, literal like, water turned into come, blood, yeah, and nobody knows what the scientists they're trying to figure it out. Right. Like, what the hell? Money. You know, well, how did this happen? Well, maybe the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was back on Earth. Right. I thought he left back. When, when he did that to Egypt, maybe he's back. We done, we done messed up. So these things are happening again, right? If you look that, but they're not showing it on the news though. But these things are literally happening again. So the first plague, and that's why this is important. This history is important because this is Egypt. This is Egypt all over again. Real quick, get Revelation chapter 11 and verse eight. Book of Revelation, chapter 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Right. So there's another place that's going to be spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. And we know that this is Babylon the Great. That's right. right. Um, go to Isaiah chapter 19 and verse 1. Book of Isaiah, chapter 19, starting at verse 1. And it reads, The burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud. Right, the Lord is going to ride upon a swift cloud, meaning a chariot, read on. And shall come into Egypt. 
and the idols of Egypt shall be moved right. at his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. So the Lord said there's going to be another Egypt through the prophet Isaiah. He's going to come in the midst of it, and the hearts of the people are going to melt, right? They're going to be like, wow, this was written in the scriptures the whole time. We did all these abominable acts to the children of Israel. Like, there was a brother just um, a few weeks ago in Mississippi, I believe. They found his body decapitated, right? Y'all seen that? He was like 25 years old. He texted his mom's like, it's some, uh, it's some white guys that are hunting for me. And next thing you know, her son is gone. And then they find his body. And then they, um, when they, after they did the uh, autopsy, they shipped this body back in like a shoe box, like, like a regular box. So it's like, was well, there foul play going on? What's going on? The skull, you can see a skull just kind of like it's cracked open, and they don't know what they don't know what happened. So this is why the Lord said He's gonna come into Egypt, and the people's heart is gonna melt. Right? Read on. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at His presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. Right? Read. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians. And that's happening right now. The Egyptians against the Egyptians, meaning the heathen against the heathen. Right, you got the so-called white man. They got a they got a kingdom split. You got the um, you know, you got uh, the Democrats against the Republicans. You got the uh, NATO. yeah, the British against NATO. You got you know these Chinese people that then came over here and assimilated themselves as Egyptians. You know they kind of leaving the ways of the Egyptians, and now they're at war with one another. You got these different sides, which is the Egyptians against the Egyptians. We don't, and they shall fight every one against his brother. And everyone against his neighbor, right? City against city, and kingdom against kingdom. You see that? And the Lord said the same thing in uh, uh, Luke chapter twenty-one. So, um, so yeah, this is Egypt again. So let's go back to um, where's we at? Exodus seven, seven and yeah. Let's uh, so that 20. was oh, we was at the first plague. Come So the first plague was what? Turn the water into blood. Mm -hmm. Now, um, let's read on a little more on that. Okay. You want to continue at 18? Um, or what? Kind. Or you want to go? Now let's read verse 19. Okay. Book of Exodus, chapter 7, verse 19. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying unto Aaron, spake unto Moses, say unto Aaron, take thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the waters of Egypt upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood. Right. And that they and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Right. Both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. See that? So the most high amped it up, right? He amped up the blood. And plague the Egyptians. So let's go to the second plague, which is um, Exodus chapter 8. And let's go to verse 5. So what, what was the second plague? Anybody know? He turned all the rest of the water. Is that what we just read, verse 19? All right. So the first one was water. I was asking, did anybody know the second plague? You said fish? Fish died and all the fish died. And, and the river shall be stank. Let's read it. Exodus chapter 8 and verse 5. Okay. Exodus chapter 8, verse 5. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch forth thy hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, right. and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. Right. And, and Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt and the frogs came out came up and covered the land in Egypt and the magician did so with their enchantments and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me right so this king called he called him up these prophets said listen Get the Lord to get these frogs way out of here, right? Uh, yeah, I'm not letting you go, but tell your God to get these frogs away, right? That's an honor for the so-called white man. That's what he's doing. He's, he's still he's doing the same thing right now, right? Read on. 
and from my people, and I will let the people go that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, glory over me. When, when shall I entreat for thee and for thy servants and for thy people to destroy the frogs from, from thee? Right. So the second play with the frogs. Right. So let's go to the third one. Let's go to verse 16. Verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, say unto Aaron, stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Right. So the third plague, after he did the frogs, he plagued the whole entire landmass with lice. That's a terrible plague. So it's just lice just flying all through the through the sky. Like imagine you walk outside, lice is all on the car, right? You walk out, it kind of fill your body up, kind of how like the bees are. You can't fly walk nowhere. Yeah, flying your eye, flying your mouth, flying your nose. You know, you you know, y'all remember that commercial with the the news reporter? He's like, oh, the, yeah, uh, yeah, you can't do nothing. <laughs> this is what the most I did to the Egyptians, yeah. right? Read on. Damn, that was lice. Um, you got me thinking, man, and I lost my spot. <laughs> so what was that? Verse uh, 16. So I think, yeah, verse 17. 17. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in, in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lice. Lice. Throughout all the land of Egypt. Right. So the Lord made uh made all the dust in the land become lice. Right. So that's the uh third play. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's wild. That's crazy. Man. So let's go to verse uh 20. Hello, let's go, yeah, let's go to verse 20 now. Verse 20. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he coming forth to the water, and say unto him. Thus saith the Lord, let my people go, that they may serve me. Else, if thou will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies unto thee, and upon thy servants, and upon the, thy people, right. and into thy houses, and the houses of the Egyptians. Right, so the fourth plague was flies, and that's after you just got plagued with a whole bunch of lice. Hmm. That's aggravating, right? And he still didn't let the children of Israel go, right? Anybody know the next plague? Let's go to Exodus chapter 9. Yeah. I know. Oh, kind of verse 3. Boring. And real quick, before you get that, get Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16 and verse 9. It's the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, starting at verse 9. All right, this is a more detailed account of uh, what was going on. And it reads, For them the bitings of grasshoppers and flies killed, neither was there found any remedy for their life. Right. For they were worthy to be punished by such. But thy sons, not the very teeth of venomous dragons, overcame. For thy mercy was ever by them and healed them. For they were pricked that they should remember thy words and were quickly and were, were quickly saved. Right. So the most high was pricking um this king, right? Called Pharaoh. Right. Pharaoh Ramses the uh I think it was the fourth or the third, I believe, right? Because there was different pharaohs, and the most high is pricking this man's heart and hardening his heart by plaguing him. Right. So let's go to um Exodus chapter nine and uh, verse three. Uh, this is, Acts chapter nine, verse three, and we on the, we on number five now. This is the fifth play. Behold, the hand of the Lord is upon the cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous marine. Now, when you get deep into these plagues on why the Most High plague these Egyptians. With these particular plagues, you'll find out that these Egyptians were serving these different type of gods, 
They had all manner of gods that they was worshiping in Egypt. And the Most High plagued them with these different animals that was a um, signifying their gods. So the Most High is like, listen, I'm the Most High God. Why are you serving these other gods? Listen, I'm the only one. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So that's why this is even more mighty. So when you think about America, what just happened to the American dollar bill? It crashed, right? So uh, first of all, it's been kind of crashed. America's dollar bill is not backed by any gold or anything. So people have been worshiping America's dollar bill since we've been over here, really. And really more so it um, elevated since like the 70s. The war on drugs, the, um, the housing situation, um, the entertainment world. So everybody's been worshiping. The number one God really in America is the dollar bill, mm -hmm. which is why they got the Egyptian pyramid up there where they got all this masonry and, and, God, we trust. and God we trust, the God of the God of money, the God of Satan. Even when you go into Esau's, when Esau named his children, one of his children's uh, name is, um, I can't remember the name, but it's like the God of money or something like that, right? So that's why the Most High is plaguing America the same way. And it's the same thing is going to go down, the same thing is going to happen. Oh, right. Kind. It's the book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, right? Nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, right? Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Right. And this is why the most I gave us that commandment. This is uh, this is after. That when he said that that was after we got freed out of Egypt, he said, Don't bow down to them, don't serve them, right? Because I'm the only one and true living God. So let's um kind of so like it. And that word jealous is going into he is the only most high God, and there ain't nobody that can counter him, just like the Egyptians try to counter him, and their magicians try to uh get back every time he sent a play, the magicians try to throw something back. So he was he was basically saying that because there ain't nobody that can do what he do. Right. Kind, kind. Yeah. And, and even in America, they got all these different magicians. You got these fake pastors. They said that they're healing people. Right. You got these different scientists that's making fake clouds. So they, they kind of acting like they're trying to mirror the most high God. Real quick. We're not trying to make this too long, but go to um go to go to Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 2. Ezekiel 28, verse 2. Because this society, they think that they're God and they're trying to mirror the most high. That's why they make the flake clouds and they done made a fake sun and a fake moon. Sun. Yeah, and they even uh cloning people. Right. Right. They'll take a man's sperm and try to um put it in the freezer and kind of save it and just start giving life. As if the most high is not the only one that gives life. So read that real quick. Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse, start at verse 1. Verse 1. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 1. The word of the Lord. You, want to say you, out? you can read that as it's written. Okay. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. Right. Thus saith the Lord power, because Thine heart is lifted up. Because thine heart is lifted up. Say this unto the prince of Tyrus. Now, in a on a deeper level, this prince of Tyrus is talking about Esau. It's talking about the so-called white man. Right? Read on. And thou hast said, I am God. The, what does the prince of Tyrus say? I am, I am God. God. Right? I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of sea. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the sea, sees many nations in the That's midst right. of the different people. races of people. Mm -hmm. Right, read on. Yet thou art a man and not God. And the Lord said, Listen, yeah, you're a man, you're not God. Read on. Though thou sit, excuse me, thou set thine heart as the heart of God. He said his heart as the heart of God. In his mind, he thinks he's God. Mm -hmm. Right? He has all of the colleges, he has all of the wealth, he has everything right now check out verse three read on behold thou art wiser thou art wiser than daniel there is no secret that they 
can hide from thee. Yeah, he said he's wiser than Daniel. How wise was Daniel? Daniel was able to tell Nebuchadnezzar's dream, and mm -hmm. Daniel wasn't even there. What does a so-called white man do? Your phone, you could be literally on your phone, and your phone to tell you what? You're hungry. You should go to Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And you were just thinking about Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Like, what the world? Mm -hmm. Right? It's in your recommendations. God, right? So the so-called white man thinks he's God through his science and through his, his knowledge on the left-hand side. You know? So, um... We don't got to get too deep in that. Let's go back. Uh, Exodus. We're going to jump to the next uh, the next plague, which is Exodus 9 and uh, verse 8. Oh, nine. We're going to go to verse 8 now. Okay. Verse 8. Right? So we're on the sixth plague, right? So the so the fifth plague was um, the most high. Uh, um, did we even finish that? Nah, <laughs> fives was number four. Nah, so, uh, yeah, so it's livestock, it's the cattle. Maureen, Maureen, yeah, Maureen. Con. So let's go to verse eight. Okay, verse. This is uh, Exodus chapter nine, verse eight. And the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take to you handfuls of ashes of the what is the furnace, and let Moses sprinkle it towards the heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. Right. And it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt and shall be a boil. It shall be a what? A boil. Breaking forth with with blands upon, him, upon man and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh and Moses sprinkled it up towards heaven, and it became a boil. Right. So the next one was the boils. And if you read on, it'll tell you that the old same magicians of the Egyptians, they tried to mirror the same plague that the Most High God did. So this is why the Most High God is still plaguing them, because Pharaoh is like, hey, my, my, my service can do that. Right. That's kind of what he's saying in my mind. Oh, you're going to do the blood? Okay, guess what my, my guess what my... Um, magicians can do. Are oh, you going to do the lice? Guess what my magicians can do. Are right. oh, you going to do the boils? Guess what my magicians can do. Right? So this is why the Most High God continued to plague them. Right? So um, let's jump down. Let's get the next one in verse uh, 16. No, verse, verse 22. Verse 20, 22. And it reads, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thy hand towards heaven that there may be hell in all the land of Egypt Continue. Come. upon man and upon beast and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt and Moses stretched forth his his rod towards heaven right so Moses took his rod read on stretched it to heaven and the Lord sent thunder and hell and the fire ran along upon the ground and the lord rain hell upon the land of egypt right so the most high uh brought hell to the egyptians breaking up the crop and everything. breaking up the crop um people aren't able to to do uh goods and service and buy and sell and be out there you know you can catch a concussion if a huge hell ball hits you in the head you know so and you got to remember the egyptians had the greatest economy at this time so the most high is destroying their economy pretty much to destroying their economy and destroying the people. So, and you can read a deeper account of Wisdom of Solomon. That's what you're about to get. Uh, I was trying to look for the precept. Chapter 19 and verse 18. Uh, Sigazin. No, Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon. So why he going there? Uh, there's a video where it's showing hell that is the size of softball. Mm. Time. And this hell in verse 24, it said the most high put fire in it. Yeah. And we mingled it with fire. Yeah. So imagine something cold and big and now it's hot with fire is falling, man. It's yeah. Imagine that joint hits your shoulder. Next crazy. thing you know, you look at your shoulder, your shoulder is just melting Skin inside. Out. And you kind of numb. You like, what the hell? You already got boils on you. Right. You got it? The wisdom, it's it's wisdom of Solomon chapter 19 and verse 18. For the elements were changed in themselves. By a kind of harmony, 
like as in a solitary notes change the name of the tune, and yet are always sounds which may well be perceived by the sight of the things that have not that have been done. For earthly things were turned into watery, and the things that before swarmed in the water now went upon the ground. The fire had power in the water, forgetting his own virtue, and the water forgot his own quenching nature. What verse you at? Verse uh, 20. I read on. Verse 21. On the other side, the flames wasted not the flesh of the corruptible living things, though they walked the rear and neither melted. They the icy kind of heavenly meat that was of nature apt to melt. For in all things, O Lord, thou didst magnify thy people. Right. So that's it on that. All right. So with the hellfire was um, the uh, the seventh plague. So let's go to verse eight. All right. We're kind of running through this. You should read this on your own. Right. So let's go to Exodus chapter 10 and verse 12. 10, 12. Okay. Exodus chapter 10, verse 12. And it reads, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts that they may come up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land. Right. Even all the hell had left. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt. And the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts, and the locusts went up over the land of Egypt and rest in all the coasts of Egypt, very grievous, where they before them there were no such locusts as they, neither after them shall it shall be such right so the locust was next right played him with the locust now let's jump to verse 20. oh verse 20. Okay. And this, it is, reads, this is the ninth plague okay verse 20. but the lord hardened pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of israel go right so he's still proud read on and the lord said unto moses stretch out thy hand towards heaven that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. Which may be what? Which may be felt. Right, what does that mean? Go to Wisdom of Solomon 17. In verse 4, I believe, or 2. Right? So he said, let darkness come upon the land that it may be felt. Right? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 17 and verse 4. For neither might the corner that held them keep them from fear, but noises as of waters falling down sounded about them. So it's so dark that you can't see nothing. They're starting to hear noises. Imagine if it's just pitch black dark. You're just hearing noises like you in the alleyway and you're hearing noises. That could make you bug out. Read on. And sad visions appeared unto them with heavy countenances, no power of the fire might give them light. Neither could the bright flames of the stars endure to lighten that horrible night. Only there appeared unto them a fire kindled of itself, very dreadful. For being much terrified, they thought the things which they saw to be worse than the sight they saw not. Right, so they were so terrified that, you know, they, they just, uh, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? You just, right. Yeah, you're you're imagining things that's not there. Yeah, you're hallucinating. That's the perfect word. That's what's that's what's going on. Read on. As for the illusions of art and magic, they were put down, and their vaunting and wisdom was reproved with disgrace. Right. So that's it on that. Right. So let's go to the last one in Exodus chapter twelve and verse twenty nine. Exodus 12 and 29. Book of right. Exodus chapter 12, verse 29. Right, this is the worst one of them all that that's the Most right. High did to him. That's right. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captives. Right. 
that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of cattle. Mm. Mm. So the Most High smote all the firstborn of almost everything, <laughs> right? Even the cattle, animals. you know. No Read, mercy, yeah, no mercy, mm. right? No respect of persons. Read on. And Pharaoh rose up in the night. He and all his servants and all the Egyptians, there was a great cry in Egypt. There was a what? There was a great, great cry, cry in, in Egypt. Egypt. There was what? There, there was, was a, a great, great cry, cry in Egypt. Read on. For there was not a house where there was not one day. Right. So every household has smited. They all felt it. First move. Yeah. That's like, you know, sometimes you see something on the news and it's like, it's your race. It's like, man, that happened to them. But you don't really feel it. It's like, yeah, you know. And somebody be like, but if that happened to you, you'll kind of be more like if somebody goes missing, you might repost it on Facebook. But if that happened to you, you're going to be up like, nah, right? Everybody felt this. Every household, the most I touched. That's mighty. Right, read on. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, rise up and get your get you forth from among my people. Right? He said, what? <laughs> this, this is Pharaoh now. I said, and he <laughs> and he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people. Right. Both ye and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as you have said. You see that? And go serve the Lord as you have said, right? So this is the commemoration for the most high saving us out of Egypt. And then you all know what we all know what happened after this. The most high parted the Red Sea. We spoiled the Egyptians, took all of their goods, and we got the hell up out of there. Right. We got up out of Egypt. Um, get Second Ezra chapter fifteen and verse eleven, Bible Bashar. Verse eleven. Okay. But Second Ezra chapter fifteen, start at verse eleven. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm. Mm -hmm. And smite Egypt and do what? And smite, smite Egypt, Egypt. Read on. with plagues as before. As what? As, as before. before. What Egypt is that talking about? I will smite them as before. I will smite these Egypt, this Egypt, as, as before. before. Right. Read on. And will destroy all the land thereof. Right. Egypt shall mourn. What shall mourn? Egypt shall, shall mourn. mourn. America shall mourn. Read on. And the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment mm. that God shall bring upon it. They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seeds, seeds shall fail through the blasting and hell, and with a fearful constellation. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. Right. Woe to this world and them that dwell therein. Let's get Joel chapter 3. In verse 19, Joel 3 and 19. I kind of forgot about this precept. Joel chapter 3 and verse 19. Watch this. Joel chapter 3, start at verse 19. Start, Egypt, verse, start, like, start at 17. Joel chapter 3, verse 17. So shall ye know that I am the Lord, your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. My holy people, read on. Then shall Jerusalem be holy. And there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. Right. And it shall come to pass. No in that, slavery anymore, read on. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down new wine. And the hills shall flow with milk. And all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters. And a fountain shall come forth of the house of the Lord and shall water the valley of Shittim. Right. Egypt shall be a desolation. And Edom and who and, and Edom, Edom read on shall be a desolate wilderness. Read that one more time. And who and, and Edom, Edom shall and be Edom. a desolate wilderness. Read on for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. Right. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. Right. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Lord. Dwell in Zion. Can't get around that. Right? Let's go to the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, and verse 12. All right? Hebrews, chapter 9. 
and verse 12. You can't get around those prophecies. That's why the Christian church, they don't want to deal with those prophecies because that's talking about America. Right? Hebrews chapter 9 and verse number 12. Look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. There read. Neither by the blood of goats or calves, but by his own blood. By his what? By his, his own blood. blood. Read on. He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Right. Continue. Come. For if the blood of bulls and goats, bulls and of goats, and the ashes of an helper sprinkled the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. Right. How much more shall the blood of Christ? Right. How much more shall the blood of Hamashiach Yahweh shot? Right. Because he literally gave his life so that we can commemorate him and rethink ourselves so that we'd be ready when he comes back to save us from Egypt again. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. Chapter 5 verse 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven. What the Lord say? Purge, Purge out, out therefore, therefore the, the old leaven. leaven. Read on. That ye may be a new lump as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrifice for us right for even christ our passover is sacrifice for us right so we we think ourselves about this passover and we think about what yahweh Shai did meaning gave his life right so that we can have a second chance and an opportunity as a whole entire nation that's right Right, the jews and the gentiles meaning the jews and the israel the scattered israelites right so that's literally what the passover is about Going back to Exodus, it, it's all about Yahweh Shai. Right. right? That's why it's commemorating the blood. That's why Yahweh Shai did what he did on the cross, etc., etc. Let's go to um, Corinthians 11 and 23. Classic. 11. 1 Corinthians? Okay, 1 Corinthians 11 and 23. Chapter 11, verse 23. And it reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Yahweh, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. Right. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Right. Which is broken. For you, this do in remembrance of me. Right, do this Passover in remembrance of me. This Passover is all about Yahweh Shah. Right, read on. After the same manner, also he took the cup. Right, which was wine, read on. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Right. This do ye. As oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Right, read on. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death. Till what? Till he come. Till what? Till, Till he, he come. come. Right, read on. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, Right, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. Right, read on. But let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Right, examine thyself what and see whether thou be in the faith, like it says in um um in a precept. I can't remember it right now. So right, Corinthians 13 5. Yeah, kind of Corinthians 13 to 5 with the water. Read on. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Right. Not discerning the Lord's body. Not discerning the Lord's body. Meaning what? Go to um 
Sirach 14 and 1. Go to Sirach chapter 14 and verse 1. The book of Sirach, Ecclesiastes chapter 14 and verse 1. And it reads, Blessed is the man that had not slipped with his mouth and is not pricked with the multitude of sin. And it's not what? And is not, not pricked with, with the multitude, multitude of sins. sins. Read on. Blessed is he whose conscience had not condemned him and who is not fallen from his hope in the Lord. Kind. Read that one more time. Bible Shah. Verse 2. Blessed is he whose conscience had not condemned him and who is not fallen from his hope in the Lord. Right, because that's the reason why Yahweh Shai gave you this Passover and gave you this opportunity that, so that you don't lose hope. That's why his, one of his biggest ministries was, O ye of little faith, right? So you're supposed to get built up in the faith more and more in the truth. So this whole thing is about, right? So um, I got a piece here. Come on, bring it up. This is the book of Romans, chapter 6, starting at verse 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Hamashiach, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, Hamashiach, being raised from the dead, died no more. Death had no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves, to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God power through Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah, our Lord. Come. Want to elaborate on that? Come. Being that we got to examine this Passover, being that you got to purge out the leaven, which is that sin, if you live in Christ, you keeping the law, statute, and commandments to the best of your ability, and if you fall short, not giving in to anything that is uh, transgressing the law, but if you fall short, being that, as as it says in Isaiah, we all will fall short through the glory of the Most High. Being that, um, I believe it's Isaiah's sixty third chapter. You know, we was programmed to be subject unto this flesh, which this flesh is going to fight against the spirit. So if you set Hamashiach Christ and you're keeping the law, statute, and commandments to the best of your ability, he will have grace and mercy on us. Con, right. con. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12. Let's get a few more precepts. All right, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12. Look at Colossians chapter 1, starting at verse 12. And it reads, Giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints and light. What does he do? Made us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints and light. Right. Meaning the Lord gave you the knowledge and wisdom and the understanding that you're an Israelite, first and foremost, woke you up from the land of the dead, right? And brought you into the faith, brought you into the truth, right? Read on. Verse 13. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Right. In whom we have redemption. Whom we have what? In whom, whom we, we have, have redemption, redemption. Read on. Through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Even the forgiveness of sins through his blood. That's really deep when you really think about it. This right. one man, mm -hmm. this one man, knowing how wicked you was, how off you was, how abominable how lost, right? How hurt you were right. in the world even, or in the truth. This one man has the power to give you everlasting life by his sacrifice, right? It's mighty, right? Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Like I got a piece of Come, kind of bring it up. This uh First Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish. With a, as a what? As of a lamb without blemish, right? Read on, and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Somebody precept, kind. Book of Romans. He said, chapter twelve, verse one. Chapter twelve, verse one. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh. 
that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Right. Holy, acceptable unto power. What the Lord say? Holy, holy and acceptable, acceptable unto, unto God. God. Read on. Which is your reasonable service. Which is your reasonable service. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12. The book of Revelation chapter 22, starting at verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. What the Lord say? And behold, I come quickly. One more time. And behold, I come quickly. Read on. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Mm. Time. That's written. With that, we say a shar, right? Passover. We pray that the most high put the spirit on you to have a mighty Passover through the spirit. Pray that you all keep it in this respective season, right? Pray. And after this is the feast of unleavened bread, you should be eating unleavened bread for seven days as follow. Right? With that, we say, Kum Yashallah. Kum Yashallah.